So here I was, blowing up our new building ground, when I realised, hey, we're over 2,000 days, actually 2,021 days in hardcore Minecraft. I didn't even make a birthday cake for the world. Shame on me. But that brought me down memory lane and I thought, what better occasion for a world tour? So let's get back to where it all started. And it's regular old me. Welcome to this well, yet another Let's Play series. My name is Wacky. And, well, good news. We are starting the series. Bad news. The world is ending. So, we know that the world is ending in half an hour. So, we are going to have to take as much as we can and actually take shelter in the cave for God knows exactly how long. And uh, here we are in the same regular old forest with the. Ooh! doggies but we can definitely say that the audio quality at least got a little bit better but we started all in here in this forest taking our first piece of wood and begging for everything to drop as many saplings as possible and we made our way to where well, we actually spent about six seven months i can't believe we actually spent seven months underground and not dying that's actually a plus and actually making progress so going long ball well, that's the other thing it took us around half an hour to get there but yeah thanks to elytra and all the progress that we have made and i still regret not building in here i'm sure we could have made it work but with all the progress that we have made this trip it takes about two minutes ish so the swamp where we got ambushed by a ton of zombies while we were trying to sleep. The village where we saw all of the, well, all of their resources spent a night and kept going. And finally, the cave. And we are actually not going to go down just yet because we're going to look at it in, well, a freshly generated world with the same seed. Ah, the cave. Our shelter for quite a while, mop farm in the very beginning, and a pain to actually move around back in the day. To think we went from this to a functional base with farms, to think that I was actually disappointed with the cave back then, that I felt it wasn't big enough. But well, we not only made it work, but we made it home. Something with all our needs and all of it decorated while still keeping that cave vibe we had in the first place. Not too bad for the limited, well, kind of limited resources we got. Actually, the only thing we didn't have was all of the above ground stuff, but I'm so happy with how all of this ended up looking all right so we're going to give a closer look at everything that we did in a sort of chronological order so the first thing that we worked on is actually that hole over there that was our very first storage system well resting area from all of the work that we were putting complete with well our labeled with goods, storage system filled with our bamboo farm that i don't know if it's working way too well or just uh yeah the collection system broke down but that is sort of fueling all of our furnaces over there and this was actually well the way from the mine it all started with says then we were able to get an upgrade if we get out of here we're going to see all of the green area complete with well bamboo forest complete with well fake forest and complete with all of our well our food farm and yeah i'm actually glad that we're not using this anymore because basically this was a fight with the slimes that were just trampling all of the crops all of the time every time that they spawn if we keep it going we're going to see actually the first tutorial that i posted in the channel this actually brings a ton of memories this was a super compact moss farm out of which we were able to get well all of the moss stuff that we actually put to good use and well some bone meal now we have a better one and thanks to all of the massive spruce trees that we got we were able to get some pods all to get a ton of mushroom blocks then on the other hand we do have our flower farm everything completely underground yeah flowers do spawn underground as well and if we come this way one of the unfinished projects and it's this this is the man-made lush cave and this was a pain to make actually i uh, yeah that i had to put it block by block and i hate making ceilings i hate making roofs i yeah i hate everything just going upside down so you see that over there that is a lava lake 
and that is what we used to have on this side as well. So I had to drain the whole thing and yeah, just replace the lava with the water. So, yeah, I mean, it looks good. It would look better if we had sort of the contrast between both sides, but well, just angles. But all of this was actually to get a better honey farm, because in the end, the bees should have stayed around. They ended up leaving, but the bees should have stayed around. And why aren't you working? It might be because there are no bees anymore. Yeah, for some reason, they all left. But we were able to decorate and to get yeah that patch over there. See, it looks good. It's just a pain to build upside down. So if we keep it going, we do have some more greenery, well, greenery related farms. We do have over here our rooted dirt farm that I should load with. Yeah, I should load with bone meal. Then our drip leaf hole. And over here, another one of the tutorials that I'm super proud of. The mud converter, I would say 3000, but it's the first one that I made. And it works actually pretty well. Like we got a ton of mud that we were able to make into packed mud, thanks to all of the wheat that we were growing over here. But if we get out of this out area, and if we go down this hallway over here, we do have the other area, the mob area so we had the farming the mobs and this had this spider spawner over here that yeah i don't mind all of the villages so we had the spider spawner and we had a zombie spawner that actually we didn't just get xp from it we actually got this we got chickens because it turns out that jockeys will spawn every once in a while and you cannot get x from those but you can breed them and get chickens that actually, you know, do chicken stuff. So if we keep it going past the fake forest, we're going to see the second area that we worked on. And yeah, you might notice all of the brick stuff. I spent a ton of time changing all of the colored blocks like granite and diorite and all of that for all well, those patches, sort of to keep the cave vibe, but still give it, you know, like the the feeling that I worked on it. Then we got the... Oh, yeah, I skipped one thing. The, well, the pool and the fishing area, complete with fisherman that shouldn't be there. And, well, next to the super relaxing sounds of the nether portal. But yeah, I was so happy with how this ended up looking. It was kind of relaxing and a way better food source than all of the crops that got trampled. Then the better storage system complete with yeah we used to have all of the stations over there and complete with our very own enchanting setup so the sugarcane easy peasy the leather we had to get it from the nether and that was stressful then all of the brewing stations if we keep it going we see well the bedroom with a hole that i'm not going to speak of and if we go down, we're going to see one of the bits that I'm actually the happiest with. And that is the alley. So thanks to these guys, we were able to get a fully functional village underground. Actually from, well, we got a couple of those and we were able to get from a breather that we'll see in a bit. We were able to get, well, each one of the individual shops, like with the uh, cartographers, with all of the librarians, each section with yeah, the different types of enchantments that we could get. Then the Fletchers that you can tell that I haven't even used them. Then this one that was supposed to be um, an iron selling spot until, you know, we stopped getting iron from our iron farm. We'll get that a look in a sec. The Butchers that we didn't care at all. Yep, yeah, they actually left. Like we had the drive through and everything with the window and they just left. Then we have the stone masons, then all of the magical stuff with our clerics and the other fishermen that somehow left. And actually the first shop that we worked on, the farmers together with our pumpkin farm. And this was actually our first supply of emeralds and actually all of the golden carrots that we might need. 
and if we keep it going to the very end, we see the breeder that we were able to get it entirely underground. Well, you can tell that it was working. We stopped it. And it's all complete with our very own Bernard. Bernard. So, right next to this, and actually on top of it, yep, this screams Iron Farm. And actually, we're going to give a look at that. Because we used all of the knowledge that we showed in the new Iron Farm, the new improved, well, improved, ish iron farm oh hello there buddy we were able to get our very own iron farm completely underground and it was just controlling all of the spawns and for some reason after 119.1 yeah it, it stopped working when we updated the game I'm so tempted of just punching nah. but we didn't spend all of the time just you know, working with villagers and mining and, well, yeah, and decorating the cave. We're actually making progress in the game. And that progress, actually, well, it started down there because we do have our very own, well, mine at deep slate level to get all of the diamonds that we were going to need. And we also have this mine over here because it turns out that to complete this game, you kind of need to move around. And that moving around, well, since we were living in the cave, I don't know, the apocalypse or something, since we had to be in the cave, we needed to travel underground. And travel underground we did. We travelled in that direction, and we also travelled in this direction. And after what took forever in-game, we found the fortress while being completely underground. We looted everything that was to be found and actually, well, got the wings that you have seen me use for, while well, travelling. Yeah, that far. In the end, it was a nightmare, to be honest. But, yeah, like, I'm all proofing. Yeah, it was a complete nightmare and... Now I'm actually going to try to find... I blocked all the paths that don't lead to the... Well, well, yeah, to the actual end gate. I don't remember exactly what it was. Right, I swear we made it to the end. Eventually. See? As I said, we made it to the end eventually, and we were, well, yep, we thought to ourselves, we are never making that trip again. So, we started work on our very own nether hub. Actually, we got all of the resources that we needed from well, the forsaken end, and all of the heart stacks from thinking that you're going to fall into the void. So, now that we had to start traveling, well, sort of far distances, started putting work in our very own nether highway so we connected the end with our very own base if we go through our nether highway and we also connected it to our face but we also connected it to well, if we go all the way we connected it to this over here yes we found a monument while being completely underground it all started with our well villager trading system and since we were still working underground it was it was kind of fun kind of a nightmare of an episode to record because we had to drain all of this from all of the yep, from all of the guardians that were inside and we made our very own guardian farm completely underground completely functional well it worked well for an underground farm. We had to mop roof everything, but in the end, we were able to get all of the resources that we needed, and you can see them already falling down. But we made it above ground eventually, and one of the first things that we did was actually to improve this thing by, well, by draining the whole monument. That was another one of those projects that just take a ton of time, but in the end, they are worth it, because you get, well, 
you get wandering traders but you also get a ton well a much better rate on the really inefficient underground guardian farm that we made but yeah the world was starting to take shape and we were starting to take our first steps above the ground with all of the resources that we were going to need so with that we were starting to well live above ground actually well our sides started looking at that hole over there and started looking at well ways out and the first way out that we made and actually this is going to be one of the first times that i use it to actually leave the place the staircase and we wanted to put on our stake on our staircase all of the good memories like for example well villagers they were annoying at first but we couldn't have survived without them fighting the ender dragon while still having only resources from the underground then the pickaxe well yeah mining was a big part of living in the cave and this over here that was my take on well one of the things that happened during the first episode and well yeah us having to well get the high ground to be able to survive some mobs and with that we were able to take the skies and leave the cave and actually see well foreshadowing done wrong but yeah we're going to skip that because we are going to start looking at our above ground base and starting with this house over here i'm so happy with how this ended up looking because we were able to, well, get to that sort of cottage vibe while getting, well, not staying too far from the cave where we held all of our resources and having our above ground base, well, completely, well, almost completely decorated, most of it functional, and being able to, well, start getting stuff done above the ground. And all of it led to this over here, the actual storage system. And I definitely wanted something that was shaped like a barn. And I'm so happy with how this ended up looking. Because yeah, it's, I mean, it's big, don't get me wrong, but in the end, it's this homey feeling and all connected with the pathways and the lamps and all that. But yeah, this is our storage system filled with all of the silos for the bulk items and all of the very specific ones that we were starting to get because we didn't just well, build and dig. We started making farms and the first one was Chad. So in the end, this was my attempt of building one of those Moai statues from, well, yeah, from Lisa Island. And... I really like how this ended up looking and I really like how we were able to fit the farms that we wanted in here. So Chad is filled with, well, it's filled with useful stuff. So over there, we do have a mob farm that in the end we, well, yeah, I'm not going to say that we intended to stop it, but in the end stuff was starting to get pretty full and we do have a massive sugarcane farm. We do have a tutorial for that one. If you, well, I'll leave the link in the description. But this was a rocket factory. Because since we were able to fly, then we needed, well, yeah, we needed a ton of rockets. Then after that, we started working on the color. And for that, our very own sheep farm. That, in the end, I still kept it going with that farm vibe. And it did, yeah, it's basically the basic redstone with yeah, the yeah, the hiding the redstone that doesn't quite work. And oh you're still there, buddy. Yeah, because that actually leads to one of well, the next well, one of the other things that we worked on, and it's this over here. This is our frog powered slime farm. That is based on a filter all the way down to get only the tiny tiny slimes that get eaten by all of our frogs and we also have a frog breeding center over there and from that all of the oh, we don't have that many we might have to breed more and after that well in this area we built as well the boom house 
and well yeah that tnt window kind of shows what it is so the boom house was basically just getting all of the farms that are based on tnt and put them under the same roof so we started with let's try to get up above let's try to get above yep right so we started with this farm over here this is a wood farm designed by el mango link in the description as well and we attached to it our very own well yeah our very own nether wood farm and a concrete yep a concrete blaster as well very simple one not that efficient and another one of our designs the nether mushroom farm one of the things that no one thinks they are going to need until they have to make one of these and then right next to the boom house now that we are at this side actually this is progress from the last episode we had to upgrade our iron farm well we have to get some well, some adjustments to it but we do have our new iron farm over here that is pumping iron sufficiently for what we need we'll have to tweak it and we ended up linking everything that we did over here with the big entrance and i'm so happy with how all of this has ended up looking we still yeah we are still missing a bridge to connect everything but yeah with this i think that we are done with oh no there's one thing that i haven't shown and it's something that is laying over here yep our very sus boat that was our completely well yeah our completely friendly ink farm that actually doesn't work as well as i thought it was basically because the axolotls escaped so we'll have to fix that eventually well the axolotls escaped the LAs kept on following us rather than you know following the ink but at the end it is pretty sus and i love it and i'm not going to change my mind about this being a good idea i'm not going to build it again but it was a good idea and if we make our way then again to the nether because we didn't just work on well, all of these things and yeah this time i didn't actually yeah i didn't actually find this place underground it would have been a nightmare to do that but if we go over our nether hub this way and if we keep flying we'll reach this and we'll reach the pig that leads the way and if we follow that pig we'll get yep we'll get to our very own color farm and i'm so happy with how this ended up looking so over here we do have all of the different dyes well except for the white one and the black one but we do have farms for most of the dice and they're all based on well yeah those sweepers and getting all of the flowers that we need are semi-automatic cocoa bean farm and well the fully automatic not at all efficient cactus farm and all of it fully decorated with that vibe that uh yeah that in the end just it just fits with the flower forest it couldn't be something super industrial that yeah, that wouldn't fit as well as this doesn't fit either. So, what happened something broke oh yeah something is broken wait see i can troubleshoot redstone so now that it all works, we can get back to the base. Well, we'll give a look to all of this because we have been putting a ton of work. Yeah, we still don't have all of the green. Oh, well, we'll get there. But yeah, I'm very happy with how this ended up looking. Not that happy about the garbage laying there. But let's get back to the base because to give a look to the last thing that we have we have to travel to well our alternative nether portal and that is right here 
Oop. Because if we go through this nether portal instead of the one that we have on the other floor in the cave, we get to the roof of the nether, and that flashlight kind of tells something. Yes, another farming area, complete with our very own gold farm. I didn't want to risk it, well, I didn't want to risk dying because of zombie Pikmin. We decided to make as well our chorus fruit farm, basalt generator, and our bartering system to get all of the goodies that we were going to need. What are you doing here, pal? Right, so we have a warden of the zombie pigmen farm. And if we keep it going, we do have another one of those farms that I'm kind of proud of. And it's this thing over here. This is our very own rock light farm. Again, with the weird pauses. But it's based more or less on the same concept as our slime filter and our, well, our frog-powered slime farming. It's basically just filtering the magma cubes to get smaller and get tons of frog lights. So, yep, yeah, complete with its own, yeah, with its very own AFK spot over there. And now that I've made myself a, well, a platform and increased the render distance because this thing is massive. So now that we are on top of this and we can see the whole thing i cannot tell you how happy i am about how this ended up looking this it's not everything that we wanted to build there's some empty spaces for example right behind the tower that there's a pretty empty space there's plenty of things that well we foreshadowed but never got to it but then i couldn't be happier with how all of this looks and I couldn't be happier with the trip itself, because it hasn't been just only well, building and getting straight to it. There have been a really, really weird things happening, like we made a silent episode, we made the opposite of a silent episode, and I actually, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the musical. But in the end, it's not the, yeah, it's not the destination, it's the journey. So if you want to catch a glimpse of the journey, check the channel for more episodes and actually now with this very weird angle we can break the scaffolding we can break the crafting table as well because it turns out that you cannot place scaffolding on top of leaves and we can get back to well what we are going to be doing for quite a while that's right we're going to get back to blowing up this island that well We'll, we'll use eventually to build something, well, better, bigger, well, definitely bigger. So, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!